Who is accusing Marilyn Manson of shooting snot rockets at them? And much more on the top five crime stories of the week. Hi, my name's Matt, and welcome to the top five crime stories of the week. We're going to start off with uh, the first crime story. It's uh, about uh, a kid named Daniel Marsh. Well, he's not a kid anymore, but he was at the time. He was 15 years old back in April 13, 2013, when uh, he cut open the screen window to his neighbor's house, climbed inside with his six-inch buck knife, and brutally murdered 87-year-old World War II vet and musician, Oliver Northrup and his lovely wife, uh, who was an adored grandmother and beloved member of her church, Claudia Maupin, who was 76 years old. He had just retired for the night, going to bed, and he wanted to murder and torture somebody. He walked around his neighborhood looking for a house with an open door or an open window. He selected Mr. Northrup's house because he had a screen window that he could cut open with his buck knife. He climbed inside, and then he proceeded to stab Mr. Northrup and Mrs. Maupin a total of 128 times. He then proceeded to carve a huge hole in their stomach and remove some of their organs. Inside the cavity that he left in Mr. Northrup, he placed a drinking glass and inside the hole that he left in the stomach of Mrs. Maupin, he placed a cell phone. He did this because he wanted to throw off the investigation. Now, why is he in the news right now? He was originally sentenced to 52 years in prison after his friend turned him in. During the interrogation, you know, he opened up to the cops and he said that he's, he had these sick, twisted thoughts of murder and torture since he's been like 10 years old. His mother was abusing drugs and alcohol and had started having a relationship with a woman that he didn't approve of. And he had fantasies of torturing and murdering uh, his mother's lover. He also told the police that he was an aspiring serial killer. In 2019, there was a bill, Senate Bill 1391, that was passed in California, which forbids trying 14 and 15-year-old children as adults. So he is in court this evening to argue that next year, when he turns 25 years old, that under this bill, Senate Bill 1391, that he should be released from his 52-year commitment, right? He also claims he's a changed man and all this stuff. And I think he even did a TED Talk video that was on YouTube for a while when they had to pull it down. Before we continue, I ask, please, if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button and uh, hit subscribe. We'll have more content like this every week. Story number two, body parts left in a barrel on a New Jersey street. Police were called to check on a suspicious barrel that was left near an intersection on Hobart Road and Teaneck Street in Ridgewood Park, New Jersey. Some of the residents of this quiet little town uh, noticed a can out in the street and it looked a little odd. And it wasn't at the curb in front of somebody's house. It's kind of like right in the middle of the road. So they called the cops, right? They checked it out. They found the uh, human remains, and they're still investigating at, at the stands right now. Now, the, the interesting thing about this was is that this happened on a Friday, which in that area, that Friday was their pickup day for trash. It is possible that the perpetrators of this crime purposely dropped off the barrel in this town, hoping, you know, before anybody knew what was going on, it would already be in a landfill. The Ridgewood Park Police Department, the prosecutor's office, and the major crimes unit in Bergen County, they're the ones that are taking up this homicide investigation. If you have any information, please contact them and let them know. Oh, 
Story number three is a possible kidnapping caught on video. This is in Los Angeles. It's extremely frightening. Uh, there is footage that a man took out the window of his, of his apartment when he started hearing a bunch of screaming. So he flipped on his video camera and he looked out the window and then lo and behold, there's a white van from which a woman was pleading for her life. Somebody help me. Somebody help me. He actually started screaming back down to the van. Hey, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? And stop that. Then he what turned to doing? somebody in his home and told them, call 911 because he thinks that somebody is getting abducted. The police are circulating this video in Los Angeles. They're asking the public for help. And uh, anybody who can identify this video. vehicle to please video. contact them and with any information you have. I'm trying. If you're in the area, if you heard anything, and if you know anything, for the love of God. Story number four is there's another bartender in Atlanta who got murdered. And this came just off the heels of a couple weeks ago when we had the uh, bartender Catherine Janess and her pit bull went for a walk after she got done her shift around midnight, 1230-ish. And they went for a walk in Piedmont Park. And then uh, around 1.30 a.m., her body was discovered. Uh, her body and her dog's body were both discovered brutally stabbed to death. Now, there's another bartender. Her name is Maryam Abdulrab, and I, I hope that I'm pronouncing this correctly. She was apparently kidnapped at gunpoint at 5 a.m. upon returning back to her home after her long shift at the Reverie VR Bar in Atlanta. Her boyfriend said that he looked out the window at 5 a.m. when she arrived in her vehicle, saw there was his, that his girlfriend was home, but then saw another vehicle pull up. Guy came out with a gun, put the gun to her, said, get in the car. And then she had no choice, got in the car, and then the car took off. He called 911 and said, quote, somebody just left with my girlfriend. Oh, my God. Later on, the police were notified of reports of gunshots in a different area and a dead body. When they went and investigated the scene, they found out that, unfortunately, it was Mary Ann's body. Okay, so she got killed by the person or the people who kidnapped her. Uh, so then the police were later involved in a high-speed pursuit that terminated in a vehicle crash, upon which they arrested a suspect, 27-year-old DeMarcus Brinkley. And he is currently being held in Fulton County Jail on charges of kidnapping, murder, false imprisonment, aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, and possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. So the most likely is a stolen firearm or a straw purchase. Story number five, our boy Marilyn Manson. Oh, my God. Marilyn Manson. Police affidavit lists charges against Marilyn Manson of spitting and blowing snot on a videographer in 2019. On August 19th, 2019, Marilyn Manson was performing at the Bank of New Hampshire P Pavilion in Guilford, New Hampshire. And uh, there was a videographer there, a contract videographer named Susan Fountain, who is alleging that Manson hocked a loogie on her. And it was a big one. It got all over her hands like a spider web. And uh, then he came back around and he put like one finger on one of his nostrils. And then, then he hocked a snot rocket. He shot a snot rocket at her. And uh, she didn't like that. Well, who, who would, right? Who's going to like that? But still, anyway, so that's all it was, okay? A loogie and a snot rocket. Uh, he's facing two misdemeanor assault charges. Uh, each could land him in jail for less than a year, and each carries up to, I think, a $2,000 fine if he's uh, convicted. And it says an arraignment hearing on the charges will be scheduled for, septem for September 2nd at Laconia District Court in New Hampshire. Now, the thing is, is that, you know, Rock stars, they're always spitting on photographers. So probably nothing's going to happen to Marilyn Manson. I think he's going to be fine. You know what I mean? All right, that's all I got. Um, <laughs> please like, subscribe, and comment, and have a great day. Be safe.